Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be sharing some of my absolute favorite dark fantasy romance books. All right guys, so despite the fact that I love both fantasy romance and dark romance, I had no idea that dark fantasy romance was a thing until about two years ago. So I've curated a list of some of my absolute favorite dark fantasy romance books. I also have some dark fantasy romance books that I haven't read yet, but I wanna to get to before the end of the year. So I'll save those for the end, but for the books that I have read, I'm gonna give you a spoiler-free synopsis and then my overall thoughts, and then I'll give you an idea of how dark each book is, because I will say they definitely vary on the darkness scale. But I am so excited to talk about these books with you guys. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram, Goodreads, and Patreon, all linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's talk about these dark fantasy romance books. All right, guys, so starting off with a book that inspired this entire video, we have Reign of Shadows and Endings by Melissa K. Rorich. This is the first book in the Legacy series, which is a dark fantasy romance series that is set in the same world as Lady of Darkness. Now, this story is following Tessa, and Tessa lives in a world where the Legacy control the Fae, and Tessa is a Fae. So she's grown up her entire life knowing that when she comes of age, she will be in servitude to one of the six Legacy houses. Now, Tessa is very surprised that when this ceremony takes place, she ends up being selected to be the personal source to the heir of endings. Now, this is supposed to be a huge honor and you're supposed to have to be trained for this and Tessa has not been, so she's very surprised when she is selected. Now, if you are a personal source, you are then forced to have these marks placed upon you and they will essentially force like a mating bond. That's how I like to pitch this to people, but it's you're given these marks that allow you to feel the person you're connected to's thoughts, feelings when they're near you. And it's just, it's a lot. It's a huge commitment. And Tessa does not want to be tethered to this person she does not know. So anyway, the first mark takes place and the story really goes from there. But I will say this book, it's not gonna be for everyone. There's definitely captor captive, forced proximity dynamics at play. It reminded me a little bit of Enslaved by Gianna Darling, except not nearly as dark or as spicy. However, I will say, this is my favorite series I've read all year, and I know I've been saying that actually a lot, which makes me really happy. However, this I actually enjoyed more than When the Moon Hatched, Kindred Curse Saga, all of the other books. I'm obsessed with this series. It is my, it is Akatar level of obsession. So please, if you have not read this yet, I highly, highly recommend. Now I will say there has been a lot of talk about if you should read this if you have not read the Lady of Darkness series. Now, I have only read the first book in Lady of Darkness, and I still rated both this book and the second book in the Legacy series five stars. However, although I don't think it's gonna take away from your enjoyment of this book if you have not read Lady of Darkness, in the second book, there are definitely characters that are mentioned that I feel like I was supposed to know who they are. So I do think that if you read Lady of Darkness, you're gonna enjoy the second book even more. But like I said, I didn't finish that series. I still gave books both books five stars. I love them so much. So the third book is coming out in October. Unfortunately, the audiobook isn't releasing until December, so I have a while to wait. But please, please, if you are okay with the triggers, pick the series up. It is so, so incredibly good. All right, guys, so this next book was also a recent read. It is one of the most unique books I have ever read, and I have no idea how I wanna read it. I don't even know if I liked it, but I wanna read book two, so. We'll talk. It is Flames of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins. It is the first book in the Legacy of Nine Realms series. It is a dark fantasy romance. I actually DNF'd this book when it first came out, I think in 2019, 2020. However, it was my Patreon book club pick, so I had to push through, and it was a time. So the story is following Arya, and she is a Hecate witch along with her all of her siblings. Um, I think there's like five pairs of twins or six pairs of twins and her twin sister has gone missing. So they go to Haven Falls, which is this like paranormal community, trying to find Arya's twin sister, and they then run into Nox pretty quickly, and Nox has declared himself king of this area, and he is a very, very powerful 
being. We don't exactly know what he is. Um, and he seems to want to have entanglements with Arya, although he also talks about how much he hates her the entire time he is also trying to sleep with her. And I will say, the writing in this book left a lot to be desired. It is very, very crude. They, I don't know. The beginning of this book was really, really tough for me to get through, and I try not to be negative on my channel, so I apologize if this is one of your favorite series. However, I will say, the second half of the book, I thoroughly enjoyed. It was still unbelievably unhinged. Like, the second half, there is some dark, dark stuff that happens that I just, it was, it was a lot. However, like, I, I did enjoy the second half of the book, and I want to know what happens, and I liked the romance enough that I want to pick up book two, so I might pick up book two, but I don't feel comfortable recommending this, because the beginning of this book, there's a pineapple scene that I threw my headphones. Like, it was, I... I'm doing a horrible job explaining. But anyway, if you have read this series, let me know what you think. I am, I'm gonna continue because once again, I liked the romance. I liked the entire second half of the book. It's just that first kind of like 60% I was just not, not a fan of. And the next two books are both by the same author. I will say this next book is probably the darkest on this list, if not one of the top three. But it is King of Flesh and Bone, and this is by Liv Zander. So this is the first book in a duology, and it is following this girl, Ada, who lives in this world where the King of Flesh and Bone has caused corpses to reanimate. So the dead do not rest. They just kind of pop up out of the ground, and it's a huge pain in this community. So our main character ends up getting attached to a zombie horse or donkey that then pulls her into the land of the dead where she is found by the king of flesh and bone and before she can like perish because she is in the land of the dead he saves her puts a spell on her and decides that Ada is going to be his plaything so Ada decides to use this as an opportunity to try to get the king of flesh and bone to like stop this curse on her people and uh it doesn't go very well so I will say the main character in this he is past morally gray like he is a bad dude I've said this in other videos, at one point he breaks this girl's legs as she's trying to run, and like he shows no remorse whatsoever. He's never redeemed. If anything, this is really showing Ada becoming more like the villain, but I still had a very fun time with this duology. So definitely check Triggers, it's dark, a lot of, lot of like dark, dark, like non-con, things like that. Like definitely check Trigger Warnings. But overall, this was a fun, dark time, so maybe check it out. And also by Liv Zander, we have Feathers So Vicious. This is also the first book in a duology. So this is a little bit more heavy on the fantasy. I feel like the other one was more dark romance focused. This definitely has more of like a fantastical world, but also has really dark themes, especially the beginning of this first book. Like there is a scene where I thought this was gonna be super, super dark. So I will say it's dark, but not quite as dark as King of Flesh and Bone. But this story is following a girl who lives in this world where there are ravens, and ravens are seen as evil. So if you find a raven, you are supposed to kill them. But the only way to tell if a person is actually a raven disguised as a person is to like torture them. So kind of similar to like the witch trials of old. Anyway, our main character ends up being kidnapped by two of the most powerful ravens who want to use her as ransom in order to get their raven friend back. And the story goes from there. One of the ravens is like the golden retriever type soldier and the other one is kind of unhinged, really, really morally gray. And I believe it does become wide shoes in the next book, but I am not positive. I still haven't read the second book. But overall, another book that was very dark, very fun. So if you are looking for a very unique story, Highly recommend. And next up we have The Coven by Harper L. Woods. This is a dark witch kind of vampire fantasy romance. We are following our main character who has been raised in secret. Her mother was a witch who fled from like the main coven of witches. I think they're called like the 13. And she's been raising her daughter and her son in secret. Now the coven finds out about our main character after her mother's passing. And in order to save her brother, she agrees to go to the coven's like headquarters or university. Now the person that ends up picking her up is the headmaster of the coven who happens to be this like monster that was created by the witches that's first forced to serve them. And I believe he has to like drink witch blood in order to like stay animated. 
Um, and it's the romance between our main character and the head of this university. So it does have a little bit of a forbidden romance like aspect because it is kind of student teacher, but also it has all of those witch elements going on. And I will say the witches in this use elemental magic, which is like my favorite type of witchy magic. So overall, I really enjoyed this. I honestly forgot about this book until I was on a live show with um, April and Carrie, uh, April from Happily Ever April and Carrie from Book for Romance. And April was like, remember the book that no one really liked besides us, meaning me and April? And I was like, yeah, and then we were talking about it. So with that being said, this book probably is not for everybody because I know it does have very mixed reviews. However, I freaking loved it. So I still haven't read The Curse, which is the second book in this series, but I do plan to probably in the fall during spooky season. But if you are looking for a witch vampire romance, definitely check out The Coven. And next up, we have The Book of Azrael, and this is the first book in a dark fantasy romance series. Now, I will say it has been a couple years since I've read this, and I don't remember it being super dark. However, Goodreads is saying it's dark fantasy romance, so we're gonna go with that. It might get darker as you progress. I've only read this first book. But the story is following Diana, and when she was in her, I think she's like early 20s, she ended up selling her soul in order to save her sister's life. So now her soul, or her sister and her are both immortal, but she is tied to this demon named Caden, who is the one who granted her this immortality. So she is essentially like his servant and he tasks her with finding this ancient artifact, not knowing that there's already this god named Liam who's also searching for it. So Liam ends up taking Diana as like his hostage, but as they travel together, a relationship kind of blossoms despite the fact they both are talking about how much they hate each other. And it goes from there and I do remember the ending of this, having like my jaw on the floor. Like I was not expecting it at all. So I don't, I mean, I have heard a lot of people talking about this book recently, but for a while there weren't a lot of people talking about this and it was a very solid read. So highly recommend, definitely give it a shot if you're looking for a unique dark fantasy romance. And next up is a dark fantasy romance, wide shoes, standalone. And it is Order of Scorpions by Ivy Asher. I absolutely adore this book and I feel like I don't read a ton of fantasy romance standalones, and this was so, so good. I read this book in two days. But this is following Offset, and the beginning of our story, she wakes up completely naked with no memory of who she is or how she got into this prison that she is in. She's then taken to an interrogator who tries to torture her to get her name out of her, where a group of assassins bust in and leave her chained to the floor but kill the interrogator and tell her that she probably has to toughen up in order to survive in this world, then they leave her. So then years pass and now Offset has been sold to this assassin camp where she is being trained to be a kick-ass assassin in the hopes that one day she will be purchased by one of these assassin guilds and she'll be able to kill enough people to buy her freedom. And the guild that ends up purchasing her is that group of guys that left her chained to a floor in the beginning of the book and the story goes from there. It is so unbelievably good. First off, I love the romance. I love White Shoes. It's one of my favorites. Um, if you're unfamiliar with White Shoes, it's one woman with multiple partners. And I just, I, I ate it up. But I also love the fact that we're trying to discover who Offset is throughout the entire story. So there's like this mystery element that is also going on. And overall, this is just such an amazing read. So please, if you have not read this yet, you need to check it out. All right, so this next series, I wanna be completely honest, I am not a fan of. However, I do know a lot of people really enjoy it and they've called it like Dark Akatar. I ended up DNFing early in book three. I just didn't like the way some characters were written and I am not a huge fan of this author's writing. And if you know my channel, you know that is Laura Thalassa. So it is Rhapsodic and this is following Calypso Lillis and she is a siren. And when she is a teenager, she gets in this very tough situation where she calls on the bargainer. Now the bargainer is, I believe he's a fae, and every time he grants you a wish, you have to take this bead, and that bead is known as a bargain that he can call on whenever he wants. So you really don't wanna make a lot of deals with the bargainer. However, Calypso is like infatuated as a teenager, and it makes a ton of deals just waiting for the day that the bargainer will call them in. And then years go by and he shows up on her doorstep when she has forgotten about him and says, hey, I need your help. Now I will say the two books I read in this series were very, very dark. There are women going missing and there are, I, from what I remember, there's some dark stuff that happens on page. So check trigger warnings. This is probably pretty up there in like the dark scale. However, like I said, I liked the story. I just didn't like certain how certain characters were written and there was just certain elements of the book I wasn't a huge fan of. 
But if you want to give it a shot, definitely let me know in the comments what you think. And next up is Lady of Darkness. This is the first book in a five book fantasy romance series by Melissa K. Rohirch. So this is the series I was talking about at the beginning of this video that is set in the same world as Reign of Shadows and Endings. I have only read this first book. However, I plan on rereading this and then binging the rest of the series before book three in the Legacy series comes out because I feel like I'm gonna wanna know everything that goes down in this series. But anyway, this series is like Dark Adult Throne of Glass. We are following our main character, Scarlet, and she is one of three adopted sisters that were adopted by the Assassin Lord. So he has taught these three girls how to be excellent killers. And really, Scarlet's main motivation is she wants to get vengeance on the Fire Fae that she believes killed her family. So because of something that Scarlet did that displeased the Assassin Lord, he makes her stay in this isolated castle until she can prove that she's ready to start killing people again. And while she's there, she starts to uncover these mysteries of children going missing, and things kind of progress from there. There's also a little bit of it, like not enemies to lovers, but really good banter romance. And overall, this was such a fun read. So I am so looking forward to jumping back into this series. And like I said before, if you have not read the Legacy series, you need to, and also this series. And next up is The Umbra King. So this is a dark fantasy romance. I know there's a second book out. I don't know if it's a duology or there's multiple books in the series. However, I really wanna go back and reread this because I remember not hearing anything about this book, picking it up on a whim, and then rating it like 4.5 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. The beginning really reminded me of the Mind F series, which is like a vigilante serial killer situation. So the beginning definitely had that vibe. But this is following Rory, and she has a twin sister, and she's actually able to see the color of people's souls. So anyway, when Rory is rather young, she ends up seeing her twin be unalived, and she sees the person who does it. So she spends the rest of her, or the next 10 years growing up, wanting to get revenge. So she becomes a vigilante killer and follows around people with dark souls, waits for them to do something bad, and then kills them. Anyway, she ends up getting captured in the middle of doing this and is sent to this prison realm where she has to stay, she'll live there for a while, then when she's released, pretty much everyone she knows will have passed on, so it's a pretty horrible punishment. But anyway, when she gets to the prison realm, she ends up looking up and the god of the prison realm, the Umber King, bears a striking resemblance to the guy that killed her sister all those years ago, and it is their romance. And it is so good, so highly, highly recommend. I actually loved the audiobook for this. I've seen mixed reviews, but I thought it was very, well, very well done, and I am very excited to pick up book two. Also, this is not nearly as dark as some of the other books on this list, so if you're looking for like a later dark fantasy romance, this is a good place to start. And next up, this is gonna be a little bit tough because it is The Stray Prince by Ella Fields, which is the second book after A King So Cold in a duology. Now, the reason I have the second book and not the first book is because this second book is about 10 times darker than the first book, and I feel like people don't know that going in. So A King So Cold is kind of like a villain origin story. I've talked about it in other videos. We're following this queen, and at the start of our story, she is in a very precarious situation. There is an army that is about to invade her kingdom. Everyone seems to not be pleased by her, and her husband is actually found wandering around the castle, and he has no memory of being king or even who the queen is. So it's really kind of showing how we got to that point. And then this starts pretty much where that beginning book also began before we went back in time, if that makes any sense. But anyway, this second book, so much darker, but also has a lot more fantasy and Faye and just feels a lot more like a fantasy romance than I feel like book one did. I feel like book one very much set up what happens in book two, but book two takes place in a completely different area and it's just overall a much darker feel. So if you enjoyed A King So Cold or you wished A King So Cold was a little bit darker and you never picked up book two, just know book two, it gets dark. And I remember I was, I read this uh, probably two, three years ago, two years ago, whenever I first moved into my house. And I remember being outside and listening to the audiobook and being like, oh my gosh, I didn't think it was gonna get as like dark as it did. So just to know that, but this is one of my favorite duologies. Ella Fields is one of my favorite writers of all time. So highly, highly recommend if you are looking for dark, spicy fae romance. And this next series is technically paranormal. It's vampires and shifters. 
However, it deserves so much more hype, so I want to include it in this video because it is one of my favorite series. So it is the Blood Alliance series. There are audiobooks for pretty much all of the books, I think, besides the most recent. And this is essentially what would happen if shifters and vampires took over the world and humans were then forced to be like the lesser citizens where they are used for food, breeding, and servitude. So we are following different romances between humans and shifters and humans and vampires. And while all of the books are going on, there's also this like rebellion group that is slowly forming to try to take down like the evil people of this world. And overall, it is so good. It is dark. It is definitely dark, probably higher up in the dark uh, scale than the other books on this list. Uh, there is definitely just check all the tr triggers because in every book, there's a different romance we're following. So every book has different triggers. There's a little bit of everything. But overall, I really, really enjoy this series. The romances are so, so good. And I also love all of the action and the plotting that is going on. So highly, highly recommend. This is perfect for the fall. And I just wanna say the next five or so books before we get into the dark fantasy romance books I still wanna read, I have talked about in fairly recent videos. So I'm just kinda of gonna skim over the plot. I feel like I talk about the same books fairly often. So I wanna to try to stop doing that. But anyway, just in case you guys don't wanna hear about these books, you can skip to the next timestamp. But next up is To Bleed a Crystal Bloom, and this is by Sarah A. Parker. So I really need to go back and reread this first book because I tried reading the second book recently and I forgot pretty much everyone's name. But this is a dark fantasy romance and we are following our main character who ends up at the beginning of this book. She is a child and she's alone in this forest and she is found by this man who realizes she is the lone survivor of a horrible massacre. Everyone surrounding her has perished besides her. So he decides to bring her back to his castle where he raises her in complete isolation. And all he asks is for a drop of her blood every night. So throughout this book, we are essentially learning everything with the main character. She is very naive. She doesn't really question things. And things are amiss in this castle. There are monsters, there are secrets. And overall, this was very, very enjoyable. I will say I had to listen to the audiobook while reading the book physically. I do that sometimes. I've talked about having dyslexia in the past. But for this, the writing, I don't want to say it's confusing. I feel like it's purposely tries to lead you astray, if that makes any sense whatsoever. It's just Sarah A. Parker's writing style. If you've read When the Moon Hatched, her writing is very verbose. She loves words. So overall, I really enjoyed it, but it's definitely a book that I really had to pay attention to all the little details while I was reading. But please, if you like dark fantasy romance, this is such a good read. And next up is The Last Lost Girl by Casey L. Bond. This is a dark fantasy romance, Peter Pan reimagining. So I like to say if you're a fan of The Never King, but you want it a little less spicy and to have a little bit more like fantastical plot, highly, highly recommend picking up this book. So this is following our main character. And when she was rather young, she was found by an older girl and they pretty much grew up together. So this older girl was named Belle. And other than the fact that Belle seemed to have a magical ability to control other people's minds and is also a klepto and would steal every copy of Peter Pan she laid her eyes on, she was a very good provider for our main character. That is until Belle says that she needs to return to Neverland and our main character cannot come with her. So our main character decides, you're my only family, follows her to Neverland, where she is almost killed multiple times and then is captured with, by a guy with a hook and the story goes from there. But I will say I love the way this book uses the amnesia trope. So in this book, if you're in Neverland for a while, you start to forget who you are and who's out there waiting for you. So pretty much all the characters in this are unreliable narrators because you really don't know who is telling the truth and they could believe they are telling the truth. They just have no memory. So I really enjoyed this. It is dark, not super, super dark. This is also probably a really good one for beginners. I know I kind of buddy read this with my friend on Instagram and she does not read dark romance and she really enjoyed this. So probably a very good dark romance beginner book, but it was so much fun and I cannot wait for the sequel. And next up is Fortuna Sworn. This is the first book in a dark fantasy romance series. So this story is following Fortuna and she is a nightmare, which means that when she touches you, you see your biggest fear. And her brother has actually been missing for the last two years. So Fortuna has gone out every single day searching for him. And one day when she gets up to try to find him, there is a fae on her doorstep. And he says, I know where your brother is and I will tell you if you agree to marry me. 
Fortuna agrees, and she is whisked away to the unseelie court, where she has to engage in these trials in order to survive and try to save her brother. And then there are all of these trickster fae, and it just has a very, like, dark, creepy feel, and I absolutely adore this first book. I've read up to book three, I believe, and then the audiobooks weren't available, so I definitely also have to reread this series. There's a lot of fantasy romance series. I really want to reread and actually finish this year, but I'm very excited to continue with this series, and I will say it is fairly dark, so once again, check trigger warnings. And next up is How Does It Feel? So this is the first book in a dark fantasy romance series. It is one of my favorite reads of the year. I will say it is completely unhinged and there were times I was like, what am I reading? But overall, I really love this first book and one of the best endings I've ever read in a book. I did not see it coming. I had no idea and the clues were there. Like it had foreshadowing. I just didn't pick it up and I love when books are able to do that. But this is following a girl that when she is younger, she sees a what she believes to be a fae and because of this she becomes obsessed with creatures with wings. She grows up to become a biologist and ends up searching for a certain moth and when she is going to try to find this moth she ends up falling down a portal into the unseely court where she is almost killed multiple times by the prince of the unseely court and it is their romance. There is a monster in this that is so it's something he's a tree monster he is creepy. Check trigger warnings. This, I will say, from what I remember, is darker than Fortuna Sworn, but it has a lot of the same vibes, if that makes sense. We're still dealing with, like, the trickster fae, the seely and unseely court, but overall, I really loved this book. I will say the second book, I didn't love quite as much. I still had a good time with it, but I can understand the lower rating, but overall, highly recommend giving this a try. And the last three dark romance books are books that I have not read yet, but I want to pick up before the end of the year. So first up we have Hellfire. Now this is a dark fantasy romance that came out a very long time ago and I am still waiting for the audiobook. I have no idea if there is one in production. I just randomly will check because this sounded so good but I honestly forgot what it was about. I had to look it up. So this is following a girl that after the death of her mother she has to flee her home realm to this dark realm where she ends up having to make a deal in order to save her soul with the king of the Nephilim, I believe, and that creates this bond that forces them together, and it goes from there. But I've seen fan art for this series, and it looks so, so good, so I'm really, really hoping that an audiobook is in production and drops soon. And of course, I had to include Quicksilver by Callie Hart. This book has taken over booktube and bookstagram. It seems like there are people now that aren't a huge fan of it and are saying it's overhyped. However, the majority I've talked to have said this book is absolutely fantastic. I have a feeling I will probably like it because I really like dark romance and I heard the main male character is a complete jerk and for some reason I kind of like that. So I have very high hopes for this book. The audiobook is dropping at the end of October, so the day that audiobook drops I will be binging this chunky chunky book, but I honestly don't know too much about it. I have had friends say that it's not super dark, so I do know that, and I know that it's following a girl that is able to go to different realms, and I think she ends up in this like ice realm where she meets whoever this guy is, and it goes from there. I honestly don't want to ruin the plot of this because I have a feeling it will be a five-star read, which is why that plot synopsis was unbelievably vague, but I cannot wait to read this book. And this last book I will most likely be finished by the time this video comes out, so my review should be on Bookstagram, but it is House of Bane and Blood. This is a dark urban fantasy, and I am typically not a fan of urban fantasy, but I've been seeing so many people reading this, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm seven chapters in, and this was pitched as being similar to Peaky Blinders, and it definitely has that feel. We're following this girl that is in an arranged marriage in order to save her family, and because of some circumstances that happen during the marriage agreement, she ends up married to somebody else, and then they want to use her in order to try to find this serial like kidnapper that's taking people, and there's a lot going on, and because I haven't finished the book, I really don't know what's considered a spoiler and not. But overall, I'm really loving the vibes of this book, and once again, I don't love urban fantasy, so the fact that I'm flying through this is honestly exciting. So I will let you guys know what I think once I finish, but so far, I'm really loving it. All right, guys, that is it for my favorite dark fantasy romance recs. 
Please let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of the books I mentioned or if you have any other dark fantasy romance rec that I didn't mention in this video. And I'd like to say a special thank you to my paladin protectors, Amanda, Leslie, Kat, and Erin. Thank you guys so, so much. And also thank you everyone who watched this video. I said this already, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.